Hi folks, I'm Scott Giles, a, uh, a life coach and a consulting hypnotist. And every Saturday afternoon at 2.30 Central Time, I make a five or 10 minute video on some aspect of coaching or the hypnotic arts and sciences. Today I wanna to talk about anger and how to use it creatively. Now, there's no originality here. I'm, what I know about this topic comes from the work of a gifted psychologist, Harriet Lerner. And uh, her classic book, Dance of Anger, is in a multiple edition. And uh, she has other books out too, The Dance of Intimacy, I think Marriage Rules, and so on. So check her out if you, you will be well, you'll be happy that you did. She's a family therapist and her work is based upon the, uh, the theory of Dr. Murray Bowen, who kind of founded family therapy in America. Um, Dr. Bowen had a fantastic definition of family um, which uh, I've never been able to track down a citation for. It was told to me by one of Dr. Bowen's students, so possibly this is something he just said uh, to his graduate students over a glass of beer somewhere. But he said, the family is a seething cauldron of pathology from which with a lifetime of effort you might partially extricate yourself from. And uh, Often family systems are where we see a lot of anger acting out. So thank you for joining me, and I'll be talking a little bit more about that in a moment. And uh, you're probably gonna find that this video works better. We have finally been able to ditch Comcast business internet services. We're now operating on Google fiber optic cable. And so that should eliminate some of the bandwidth problems we've had doing these videos in the future. Now, what? What Dr. Lerner believed is that anger is actually your friend. Acting in anger will almost always get you in trouble, but knowing that you are angry and exploring why you're angry is a critically important life skill. Anger tells you that you believe your boundaries have been somehow violated. Now, it may be you've got your boundaries pushed way out there and you have unreal, unrealistic expectations of other people and you need to haul those boundaries in. But it could also be that your boundaries have been violated and you need to find a way to reestablish them appropriately. In that sense, anger can be very positive because it motivates change. No one likes feeling angry. And when you have anger, one of the things you can do with that energy is say, okay, why am I angry? What's going on with me? And what do I need to change? So I will not continue to be angry. And that is a critically important question to ask. And then you make those changes. Additionally, anger helps us define ourselves. No, I don't like that. No, I'm not gonna put up with that. No, there's a problem here. I feel angry at this. This helps you discover where your limits and your boundaries are. Uh, it helps you discover what kind of person you are. Uh, it helps you discover what kind of relationships you need to be happy and what kind of relationships need to be on your absolutely no list. Now, anger fuels change. It tells you your boundaries have been violated, leading you to explore that. And it helps you to find who you are and what you need. So positive things. Though again, I wanna recite that caveat, acting in anger will almost always get you in trouble. Knowing that you are angry and exploring that will almost always help you out. Now, the energy of anger can certainly be misused. One of the ways you misuse it is by holding it in, forgetting to articulate it. You wanna be nice. I hate that word nice. I'm not a nice person. I strive not to be nice because nice means I'm un unobjectionable and nice means other people can walk right over me. I'm not nice. I know who I am, I know where my boundaries are, I will defend those boundaries because I will articulate my boundaries if my anger tells me something's gone wrong. 
So a critical mistake is refusing, refusing to voice your anger, to be nice instead. Another critical mistake is to hold on to your anger. This is a weak spot for me. I can, I can ruminate on until I have a chance to get quiet, to get calm, to do some thinking through. Uh, holding on to anger just lets it fester and it messes up your body's biochemistry. Not a good thing to do. Another mistake is to use the energy of anger to motivate a cutoff, to just reject a relationship or someone or something. Well, if that's how you feel, you're out of my life. I divorce you. Uh, I'm breaking this relationship. That's not usually a creative use of anger. Instead, you need to ask yourself, well, why am I angry in this relationship or this circumstance or this job? And then see what you can do to creatively transform the situation so the cause of that anger is ameliorated or removed. And a final problem with anger is not being strategic in how you deal with it. Some people in the, 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 the rage of all the energy and adrenaline and cortisol that bubbles up when you're angry will do what's called flooding, which is targeting another person with just an endless chain of wrongs and past uh, mistakes and on and on and on and on. And you generate too many objections. Other people can't handle that. They can't process all of that at any one time, so they shut down. That's not a helpful response. And a final lack of strategy is demanding that other people change. Other people don't change. And they're not going to change so that you are not angry. They may fake it, but they're not really going to change. People change because of their own internal process, not because someone else demands that they do. Uh, a wonderful story. Um, to avoid all this, you have to have a profound respect for difference, which means you can't expect everyone to agree with you. There's a wonderful story that Go Lerner herself tells about a, a, a picture of a dog and a cat in bed together. And uh, the cat says to the dog, it's not that I'm emotionally unavailable, it's that I'm a cat. And that is real. People differ from each other in ways that are meaningful. And you have to have some tolerance for that if you're going to have any sort of an ongoing relationship. But along with having a profound tolerance for difference as you deal with your anger, because that will surely drop it, you have to also know where your bottom line is. Anything can't go. I mean, you have to know what you do want and what you absolutely will not, do not want. So you need to know your boundaries. And anger and where you feel angry helps you discover them. So anger tells you your boundaries have been trodden upon. You may need to have your boundaries pulled back. They may be too far out there, or you may need to reestablish them. Anger fuels change, a good thing. Anger helps you define yourself, a good thing. But it can be misused. If you hold it in and try to be nice, if you hold on to it as if it were something precious, if you use it to motivate an explosive cutoff with another person, if you fail to be strategic in how you deal with that anger, flooding another person, or demanding that they change, not wise. Respect differences and also know where your bottom line is. And you won't be angry very often. And if you do get angry, it'll be a positive opportunity for you to figure out what's going on and get healthy boundaries back in place. Hey, thank you for your attention today. I really appreciate it. I will be back next week with another topic at 2.30 Central Time, and I'll be talking at that time about my personal journey into the hypnotic arts and sciences. How did I get started with all of this? Uh, and uh, I think you might find that interesting, and perhaps it might, especially for my hypnotic colleagues, it might uh, illuminate certain parts of your own journey. Uh, as always, if I can be of help to you, please feel free to reach out to me uh, through uh, messenger, phone, e email, or through my website. And when I edit this video, the website will appear below my image, uh, and I'll be putting it up on my YouTube channel. So thank you for your attention. Don't get angry unnecessarily. 
and we'll talk to you again.